Yo, yo, guys, can me say from Off Targets Fab and Prepping. In this video, I'm going to be going over a bug out bag I've recently put together. Now, this could be classed as my bug out bag over 72 hour gold bag because a lot of the items from that from that bag are now in here. This is the updated version as well. Um, so it could be used for a 72 hour gold bag, but it is actually set up as a secondary bug out bag in my family unit. So, as you know, at the moment, I'm putting together my inch bag and my inch kit. Now, as well as that, in my uh, bug out plan for that, for you know, the end of day situation, which is why I'm putting together that kit. Uh, my family will be involved, they will be bugging out with me. In my main bag, I do have stuff to sustain me and them. But my brother, who's younger, is a couple of years younger than me, I'm 23. Um, he is an able bodied young man like me. So he will be able to actively be a lot more active out there and actively knows how to use a lot of the items in here from me showing him. So he will know how to use this kit, he he knows how to use everything in here, and this is what the purpose is. This is his bug out bag. So it's got clothing in frame, it's basically set up. If for some reason he got split up from us, I believe he has everything that he needs in here, except for really you don't have to supplement with more food and water, which you do out which you'd have to do anyway. He has, you know, methods and ways to do that. Except for that, he has pretty much everything I believe he would need to survive, you know, for a long term situation on his own. Nothing major, nothing that's going to make, make it, he's not going to be able to do a lot, but he will be able to survive, you know, maybe not comfortably, but he will be able to survive. Now, before we get into the bag itself, we are just going to go over another item first. I'm not going to get out of this bag, but in here is just the roll mat and a big wool blanket, which is a sleep system for this bag. Now, I have it attached uh, onto the bag at the front with these bunges, as you can see here. But, uh, yeah, when it's not in use, it's just wrapped in this bin bag here. I do need to secure it, I think it's come loose in there. But that is the sleep system, a standard military roll mat and a big heavy duty wool blanket. So that's that. So now let's go over the bag itself. So on the outside here, obviously, this is where we attach um, that. Also, these can be used in making a shelter. I do have two other bungees in here and I do have one on there. So I have five bungees all together, but four of them are to be used for a shelter. These two and two inside the bag, as you'll see later. Um, here we do have a chem light. This is the only chem light in here. I've only got this basically for if he needs a signal at night. Um, it's just an instant way to do it. This is a really good high quality one and it has 30 minutes of high intensity. It will last, a f last I think, for about 8 hours. But for the first 30 minutes, it'll be a really intense bright yellow light. So we can use it to signal us at night. Um, yeah, so that's that. So we'll go over it from the outside first, like I said. So the next item we'll go over is the water bottle and basically my method for cooking food. So we'll go over what's in the front here first. So it all comes in this little, like, this is a woodland digital camo, you know, like bag. Simply, you just clip this on the side of your bag. It also does have something inside, so you can't just carry this itself. But I have everything in here to basically, you know, get clean water into my system. I can boil it and uh, chemically filter it. I do have a filter straw and system in here as well. Uh, you'll see later in the bag. But we'll go with minutes in here at the moment. So in here, first of all, we've just got a hundred Combat UK waterproof matches. Um, we've got two gel blocks there. We've got the little stove, just a little simple BTB stove with two gel blocks inside it. Um, we also do have another 100 Combat UK waterproof matches. I've got, I think I've got about 20 of these little packets. I've got a bundle on eBay for a couple of quid. So I've got like loads of these little packets of matches. Then in here we have 10, 20, 40, oh sorry, 10, 20, 30, 40 purification tablets in there so I can chemically purify my water. Then in here is where you have the main water bottle. We'll go over that now. So first of all, at the top there, I do just have the strap. You can just have this over your shoulder, like a little shoulder bag, and you just have the strap there to attach to these um, eyelets. I think you call them all attachment things. I don't know. I'm thinking eyelets, but I forgot the word. It's gone out of my brain. Um, in here, I do have another 20 purification tablets. So the other ones I fell to the bottom. There's another uh, 10 in there. Is it one, two, three? Yeah, 10. Um, so then we have, first of all, we have the water bottle, just a simple stainless steel water bottle. It's about half full at the moment. Um, here we also have a spoon that also has a can opener, a bottle opener on it. And it's got a fork there and it's got a little serrated edge, so just like a little multi spoon thing. Something to eat with. Um, there's the other 10 purification tablets, so I have 16 in this thing initially. 
Um, here is a little thing to get the uh, to get the cooking pot off the fire. Just came out first, but now we'll get the cooking pot out. Put the lid. So that's my system. So that's the bag. I'm just going to put the bag on this table here. Um, so pretty much that's my cook system that I think can, can contain in it about uh, 700 milliliters of water or 25 ounces so pretty much this is my cooking system this would be put in a fire like that if I needed to get it out obviously if I had that on I could simply just do something like that so I could get out of the fire without getting myself oh sorry drop that um, but yeah so that is my way to cook and purify water if I need to. Also, I can boil water in the metal water bottle itself. Off to the side. Sorry about this. I'm just put. I've got like a little small table here. I'm just putting all this on, so it's not because I've not got that much room on my table. So next of all. We'll go over what's inside the pouch next to it. There's like a two pouch on the side of the bag. Um, so in here we either have my flashlight. Uh, at the moment the batch is not in, but at night it uh, will be ready to go. So there's my shadow hawk. Times 800. Flashlight's really good. Waterproof. Um, there's my, little, my EDC kit is now in here because at the moment I've got every I've got double of everything in my inch bag. What's well, actually in my EDC, so it's in this kit at the moment. But it is interchangeable. But here's a little EDC first aid kit. There. Also, I do have there's loads of things in there. I'll get everything out. So these two these two things here. Uh, this is part of my EDC as well. And um, this is just initially on this kit. This can be used to make truck wire around your camps. There's just two nails in there. And I think about 50 meters of nylon thread, maybe more than that, maybe less, uh, maybe 50 feet. I'm thinking of, but a lot of nylon thread nonetheless. And with that and this, you can simply make a trip alarm that will, you know, go off because this is an emergency alarm. I'll just do it real quick, like that. Oof, that it's only for a second, but you earlier how loud it is. So that will definitely wake up a camping night if someone happens to, you know, trip this alarm. I do have a bigger version of this in my main bug out bag. You know, like a, a more sustainable one. But if for some reason, you know, they either separated, it could still make a simple little alarm system around camp. Um, here we have a mosquito, you know, head net or a, you know, a head net. You put it over your cap or hat, whatever, and it will just stop any midges or anything from getting to your face. Um, yeah. Also, in here we do have an emergency blanket. This can be used for shelters, for medical purposes, for all sorts of things to keep you warm, keep you. Um, secure from the elements. Hey, uh, we do have some camo face paint now. There's no real reason to have this in. The biggest reason was the fact that it has a mirror inside, and a mirror can be used for signalling. But it's you know doubles as camo cream as well. I've, I've got like five of these from a load of surplus kit I bought, so I'll just throw this for, for it doesn't take up that much room and it has a mirror on it. Um, next thing we do have in here is a little wire saw just to be used, you know, for gathering firewood. Quick access. There's another saw in here, but that one's just on the side here. Um, and then I'm thinking uh, I just have, yeah, just have a couple more of these little clips if I want to clip anything else onto my bag. That's everything inside of there. Right. So now we've got two. Things here, it's going to be easier to move the bag around now. Oh, well, I'll tell you what, we'll do. We'll do what's on the front for on the last. So we'll do now what's on this side. So obviously this was on the uh, 72 hour gold bag when it was called that. Like I said, this still can be used that, but now it's been, you know, updated and it's a secondary bug out bag for my brother. But um, on this, he does also have, or I would also have, a crossbow. Um, a pistol crossbow, this is £80 draw weight. I've done a review on my channel, go check out. It's called the Mankung Alligator Plus. Really good crossbow if you want to know more about it. But yeah, it's a pistol crossbow that you simply reload like this. Got a safe on it, got a sight. I've also got a red dot sight that I can attach there. So it can be used for hunting or for self defense in a worst case scenario. Like I would say, don't condone that in normal day situations, but that's that option. 
Um, the only thing that has updated from that really is now I've got a better grip on the front, a better foregrip. It had just a default one, but now it's got a really decent foregrip. And this is extendable, so when it's extended with the Allen key that is uh, in there, it can be extended, which means it's a lot easier to control this and use this effectively. So, yeah. So next thing we've got here, we'll get this off now, is my trauma kit. Now, obviously, for this being a situation, this is a trauma kit here. Again, I've, I've, he doesn't know as much as me about how to use this, but I do put one of these on every kit anyway, because there's fir normal first aid, items that he could, first aid items he could use, but I've, I've showed him how to use the tourniquets and somewhat, and, these, and the emergency bandages and stuff like that. Somewhat. He doesn't have as much uh, knowledge to use them things as I do, but if he needed to, he could. But this, like I said, can still be used for me. So that's why I have a fully functioning trauma kit. Um, so, yeah, we'll go over it. So, first of all, in the front here, we just have a pair of trauma shears and a permanent marker that can be used with the tourniquets or can just be used for other writing purposes to write the time on them. Um, here we do have just a British flag, same as last time, and the thing. So, people who do not know what this is know it's medical. So, now when we get onto the inside, there's loads of items in it. So in there you've got stuff like like painkillers, personal medication, um, you've got you've got plasters, you've got alcoholic wipes, you've got medical tape, safety pins, paper clips, whatever you call them, you know, to attach, keep bandages secure, um, stuff like that. Now this is where the the most trauma items are. So first of all here we have an emergency or an Israeli bandage. It can be used for any severe wounds on your torso, arms, legs, even on your head. Really good bit of kit. Here we have a tick remover and a pair of tweezers, so it can be used as both. So if it does get a tick, or if someone else did get a tick, they could use that to remove it. Um, in there as well, we just have a triangle bandage, some smaller scissors, uh, some a loose plaster there, and that is everything inside of that part of the kit. Then there we have one, two tourniquets, so they can be used, you know, for any wounds on your legs or arms, or can be used for securing bandages if nothing else. Not, so you won't use it as tightly, but it could be used for that. Um, in here, first of all, we have an emergency blanket again. Now here we've got, in there we've got some goss pads, um, some other medical, yeah, some goss pads, some adhesive pads. Here we've got one, two, three bandages. There we've got two four meter rolls of goss. We've got two self-adhesive bandages. We've got some extra medical tape that I just chucked in because they had it. And yeah. That's what's in there. That is the trauma kit. Not really changed too much since I uh, initially did this video with, you know, the kit that this is got a lot of items in. It's this is the upgraded version in a better bag and everything. If I didn't mention, this is a 60 litre combat UK patrol pack. Um, it's a really good heavy duty backpack, waterproof and all that. Really, really good bit of kit. At least from where I purchased it, it said it was waterproof. I've used it on the rain once and I didn't notice any of my kit on the inside getting wet. So there's a trauma kit. But yeah, I, don't, I definitely don't think I mentioned it, so 60 litre patrol pack combat UK. Now let's go over what's in here. So first of all, again, kind of for the same reason, this is a 24 hour, oh no, 72 hour protection mosquito, um, you know, like bug repellent. And honestly, this does work. I used them recently when I went out in the wilderness with my dog and they kept them away from me and I put one around his collar to keep him away from him and it worked perfectly. Well in here I do have a compass with a whistle attached to it. So obviously I, I've not, I do have a map but it isn't included in here. So that's what that, that's what's there. Um, well it is included, it's, I just want to show it on screen the map. So here's a little BCB fishing kit, same as last time. And there you've got approximately 32 metres of on a winder, 32 metres of fishing line, a winder, two swivels, two hooks, two weights and two laws. So a little simple fishing kit. Also, the nylon thread that you saw in the other pouch could be used for uh, extra fishing wire. Here we just have my knife sharpener. It can be used to sharpen fishing hooks in there. It can be used to sharpen my saw as well. So a little multi-purpose thing and I've just got a ranger band attached there and I've got a couple of, a few other ranger bands inside. They're just, if I need to secure anything. And that is everything in there. So now we'll go over what's actually 
on the front of this, which there is a lot of items. Oh, there, man. Right. So, um, yeah, we'll start from this side to that side. So, up here, first of all, in this uh, little Viper Tactical digital camo pouch, actually a pair of binoculars to be used for scouting out the environment, scouting our hedge, you know, if you're hunting, looking for animals and stuff like that. There. Underneath that, I do just have my Biofang receiver. In there, I do have the charger for it. Another, uh, and the headphone attachment, but if I need to use it, it's ready. Power on. If someone else needs to use it. Um, and then on here. So, this did used to be a little pouch I used to um, keep stuff in that I might need to get back to. But now this contains a lot of ammo for that crossbow, a lot of pistol crossbow bolts. I'm not going to get all of them out, but just hell, a lot of them. I think there's um, 60, I think it's 50 or 60 in here, I can't remember off the top of my head. But anyway, more than enough, if you know what I mean, to get the job done. Just if you need to use it for self-defense, like I said, and everyday situations don't condone that. But if someone did need to use it for self-defense, it does give that purpose but it can also be used for hunting you know small to medium game um so as well on here I'd, in this pouch i do have one lighter and i do have uh, a decent amount of snare wire there so just some metal snare wire and lighter now on the other side here, I do have a replacement 80 pound crossbow string for this for the pistol crossbow, and I do have another two uh, crossbow strings in the bag. You'll see later. As well in there, again, I do just have another lighter, and I, it's right at the bottom. I can't reach down without tipping it. So it's just a little Allen key that can be used to take off the uh, limbs of the crossbow, so I can put this on. Yeah, that's that. I'm gonna take all these off though as we go along now. Just put that off real quick. Just put that off to the side again. Right, so these other two items here that we'll go over now. First of all, here we have a really in-depth little fire starting kit. I do have way more fire starting stuff in there as well. So like I said, in a, in a sense, this is to be used for long term. So there's a lot of fire starting stuff, but in here I do have some fire starting material, some like stuff there. I've got some other fire starting material. Again, some in a waterproof combat UK matches, a little gel block, a little sorry, a little like chemical block that's really good for starting fires. Another lighter, as well as the two I do have there. Um, a little fire steel, I've got another one in here as well. And just because I've, and I, I can always use more, there's just a little small knife sharpen the day if I just need to do any, you know, I need to sharpen one of my knives. I've got two knives in here if I need to sharpen my axe. But yeah, I've really got this one. This one's a lot easier to sharpen my axe with. Just that little thing there. But it can be used to sharpen my knife as well, as well as the other knife sharpener that I do have. Little fire starting kit just attached there so two of the most important things right are shelter and fire so if you needed to he could just grab his water bottle thing that like i said is attachable and he could just grab this and if he needed to leave this he could take them with him and you know it's radio or anyone else could so he could go and you know scout out right one of the really big things because of the current situation in the world do you know is we are probably at a time when something you know nuclear biological chemical could maybe happen hopefully it doesn't but it's just about being prepared so when you do have a gas mask and a filter um, so I have one GP5 filter ready to go, and I have my Finnish, I don't know if you want it, I can't remember the name of it now off the top of my head, Finnish M62 or M61, version 3, but I know it's the newest version of this gas mask with a uh, 60 to 40 millimeter thread adapter there, so you can put filters on it, and it's a really good gas mask, one of the best ones, um, again, don't know if you want it on my channel, just go look for the gas mask, it'll say Finnish in the title, Finnish gas mask. That's that. It's awkward to get back in there, so these I'm just going to pop off to the side. And, yeah, that's that. And then, I want to write them on the ear. 
is just my knife so i'm not going to get it out but it's just attached there on the loop and just to secure it to the bag more directly i've just got a paracord bracelet with a, a decent amount of paracord on so extra cordage as well attaching it to it there but this is my copy of the u.s marine corps knife right here combat knife now uh, from if i'm remembering correctly this is full tang heavy duty um i've used this before it's quite a good knife it can be used for bushcraft stuff but as i said in the initial situation you know there could be potential threats so this is actually initially meant to be used for self-defense against potential threats um like i always like i've always say don't condone that in everyday situations but it's just given that ability with this u.s marine corps combat knife well a copy of it not the original Um, as well as this, on the top here, I do have a hat. Just a simple baseball cap that can be used with the um, thing to stop mosquitoes. Secure it to keep it on your head better. Or it can just be used to keep the sun out of your eyes. So now we're going to take these pouches off. So we can lay the bag down and go over all the goodies inside. And we will reattach all of these later. Set in the binoculars. <laughs> um, that will keep on. That's not going to get damaged. So now we're going to lie this down. <laughs> Still quite big, covered entirely, and we're just going to go over everything in here. <sighs> so before we get into the main bags, there's one other compartment that I'm going to go over. It's just easy to go over why it's like this. So there's a little compartment here where I've just put things that are important as well. Right, so in here I've got stuff. First of all, I've got my Shimog or Shimok. I can never pronounce that word for the life of me. But um, this can be used for filtering water, bandage material, you know, to keep the sun, keep the rain off you, you know, to keep your neck warm, keep your neck cool. Um, multiple purpose, multiple things. And also can be used, if nothing else, uh, can be used in an improvised backpack. As well in here, if it is needed to keep any equipment that's on the outside dry, if you have a dry bag ready to go there so dry bag also can be used if it needed to like i said from when i've when i've been out in the rain with this it is waterproof but if i needed to i have got that ability and the next thing i've got here is combat uk survival bag now this basically is like kind of like a bivy bag if you needed to you just get yourself in it and keep yourself from the elements so if you was in a really bad situation it's just a quick bit of shelter that is accessible on the outside of the kit to get quickly and it unrolls like that and you simply get inside it, it's quite big. Survival bag. Right, so now let's go on to the inside inside. So there's a few compartments here. We'll start from the top. Right. So first thing we'll get out here is my heavy duty work gloves. These have not changed since these. These are some of the best gloves. I use these for all anything I do in the garden anything like that as you can see they've been quite they've been fairly used and they do the job heavy duty work gloves use them out in the bush as well when i went camping and they do the job to keep your hands from getting any you know cuts or scrapes um here is the water filter system so this is the aqua weight water filter system then there's a filter straw you know the thing for getting access to discharge out the filter but you know the bags to attach it to so you could filter through it about a litre of water at a time with the bag that's in here. So the Aqua Wave water filter kit. And last item in here is, as you know, I do like my ponchos. So there is my US Woodland, uh, digital Woodland camo is what it's called when we purchased it. But just, uh, you know, a decent little poncho. It's got eyelets on it, so it can be used as a shelter. It's fairly big, so that is pretty much there to waterproof me and uh, my bag if I needed it. everything inside that compartment yes it is so now let's go over the next compartment right, so this is going to be a bit where it's going to start to get awkward to do this 
Right, we'll do it like this. So for the um, flashlight, do I do have? If I didn't want to attach it to attach it, attach it to one of my front straps, I do just have the thing here to do that. Simply just open it up and you put the flashlight inside. Um, next time we'll get out. So this is the site for the crossbow. It's just wrapped up here in a little back camouflage bandana. Also can be used for camouflage yourself and filtering and stuff. It's quite similar to the Shimog, just a lot smaller. And there is the site I have for my pistol crossbow to use it to hunt or to pick targets better. Um, there's a lot of items in here, so we'll unzip it from the side. So we'll just go over, we'll try and go over the smallest to biggest. Right. So here is everything else I've got for fire starting. So in there I have got a whistle with a compass on it, and that has got about a, f a hundred or fifty, fifty to a hundred, um, really heavy duty stoneproof matches. Um, it's got my Bear Grylls fire steel. I'm just gonna get out. It's gonna be easier, isn't it? So yeah. So this is my little metal tin. Um, in there is just stuff like wicks, beeswax, and some other some other um, fire strike material, some waterproof matches again, a little fire striker, and some wicks. Basically, that is my you know last resort, best you know and easiest, and it's always going to be waterproof contained in this little waterproof box. So if for some reason I drop this into a lake or something, you know, for if doing a lake crossing, I know 110% this will be waterproof. So it's completely waterproof in this little metal container. I've literally dropped this in my sink. To test it and it came out as dry as a bone. I wasn't gonna say a joke then, but it might have been inappropriate. Um, and here I've just got my little char cloth maker and some access material that I just have an old, an old t-shirt that don't fit me anymore um, to make char cloth if I needed to out in the bush. I think there's, yeah, there is some in there as well. So another fire start method there. Um, again, this could be attached to the outside. Actually, I think it was meant to be. But in here is just some different materials. Uh, they've been soaking in this for years now. It's some 100 proof alcohol. If I open that, it literally sinks like a deodorant can exploded or something. Um, and there is just some wood soaked in it. Um, some a little small amount of cordage, some paper, a little wool ball at the top there, and some foam material. So just oh, when it fire starting method, and I'm going to actually stick that back on the outside because it is meant to be there. Um, we'll We'll secure that properly later. So as well in here, I do just have some looser stuff. So I've got some more of that, you know, fire starting material that you've already seen. Um, and here we do have just some fat wood. Again, the bear grills. Fire steel. There. Throws a decent spark. I'm not going to throw a spark, but it does. Really good fire steel. I've actually done reviewing this on my channel. Um, I think it should still be up. I don't know if it, I deleted some older videos. But I think the one for this is still up. Sorry, if I'm wrong, I'll make a, a new review on it in the future. Um, here is the little whistle thing, you know, attaches with this lanyard. Um, compass on the top and is accurate, which I was surprised with. A little whistle there. <coughs> you need the signal. And on the inside, some fire starting material and a load of stone proof matches. I think about 50, if I'm remembering correctly. And inside there's a striker for the actual waterproof matches, and underneath that is just a little mirror. Right. Starting. And a little more in here to go over. Next door, we'll go over my main bushcraft knife. So, in here, this is the Elk Ridge um, full tank bushcraft knife. Again, done a review on this on channel if you want to go check it out. Um, stainless steel, really good item. I used this only a few days ago to um, split some wood for, uh, for some of that fat wood that I had processed. And yeah, really good knife. And again, it could be self defense, but I do have one initially out there to be used for that. So, this is more of my bushcraft full tank heavy duty, really good little knife. Um, next tool we'll get out is my little communist trowel. So it's literally just something I picked up off eBay. Again, really good little item. I've used this recently. Little trowel, and it's got some cordage. It's got a cordage handle. Got a little saw edge that does is fairly decent. A little serrated edge. 
and obviously you, you've got different things there for like bolts and stuff and you've got your shovel end which is fairly sharp itself and another good thing about this that i thought was really good if you wanted to make this bigger uh you could easily just you know shove some piece of wood that it would fit on and you could make more of a shovel but this is just there for uh, digging a hole to take a crap in you know a little latrine or if i wanted to you know to dig something to you know store some food under what some food on the ground or just to you know a fire pit that's the purpose of that Um, next thing we've got here is just my little foldable saw. Uh, this is nothing special, I can't really remember the name of it. I think it's probably a Combat UK item again. It was just something I got off a of Preppers, Preppers Shop UK in a kit. And it's a really good little saw. Test it out, it does the job. Um, and for a little bit, you know, heavy duty fire, a little bit heavy duty, duty, duty fire gathering or shelter building material gathering, I do just have my rough neck tough world tough tools um little hatchet can't remember the exact weight but it's a really good thing again use this recently i do need to clean all these items up after that there's no rust on it it's just like sap off the tree but um a really good little item and next time i do go camping and film it this will be a kit i will be taking um with with the uh, items that aren't meant for me taken out like the clothing that you'll see later but this will be the kit I will be taking next to test everything out because I know everything in my bug out bag works. I've tested out multiple times. But yeah, so that's um, my hatchet in this kit. I don't like this sheath on it though. It's a protective thing, whatever you call it. It's all good to put on. Get another one, but yeah. Roughneck hatchet, little combat UK. I think it's combat UK, it probably isn't, but just a little simple foldable saw, nothing special. Um, there's some other items in here, let me just find them. quite far down that was in the other part just in front of that so this is my multi-tool in this kit now me edc just a little update on that i have took my multi-tool out of it because i just won't find use for it in everyday situations so the uh, the multi-tool that was in that is now in my main bug out kit i do have two multi-tools in there now but in this bag i just have a simple little nothing special nothing major little multi-tool with a knife a saw and some other little things on it and obviously a pair of pliers so it's a little simple nothing special at all multi-tool with a few little things on it there let me just double check that that's everything in this compartment yep now we are going to get into the main one that has got the most in and i'm going to have to work this bloody out Yeah, I'm just going to go for it. It's just going to be awkward to get everything out on the table. The space I've got available to me. But we will work it out. So, yeah, well, it's going to be easy to do it like this. So first of all in here we do just have a meal, so in there is two MREs, so a meal for two days. And then there's just a little thing there with something to make a cup of tea, a couple of little sweets in it, some sugar, creamer and all that. To make a cup of tea, and I think there's coffee in there for energy as well actually. Um, but yeah, just that. It's not the full, it's not a full thing, but it's enough, you know, for two days. Two meals. And all that. Um strap that so the next thing at the top of the bag here is all my ways to charge and keep stuff powered so i'm not going to get everything out there because loads in but there i've got uh 10 batteries that can be used in both my flashlights you see the one i've got in in this section in a minute with the adapters for them um you've got four more things to keep the uh 
sight on my crossbow. If I do have that on my crossbow charge, so four there. You have a power bank. There is something worth getting out and showing you actually. Me. I'm not going to get anything out though. So there is the battery from the flashlight. There's a battery adapter for that flashlight in a separate little simple bag. There's a charger for it. There's a charger for my handheld receiver. Some extra loose wires. There's the headphone adapter for my wire. Um, there's a little here's my power bank in this kit. Just an old one, outdated. Not. In, I've got a couple of other ones now that are a lot better than this, but because this one is a decent one and at the moment it's fully charged, this is the one that I do have in here. And obviously, because that one isn't solar, I do have just a simple little weight to keep it charged out in the bush. And this is just one of them little um, backpack solar panels. There. So you can use this while you're out and about on the trail to keep your stuff charged. Look, all the items in there and then just, like I said, just the adapter and that. I'll just keep waterproof, extra, you know, keep your electronics extra secure. Um, next thing we'll get out is all my shelter stuff. So, in here is my top. In here is hell of a lot of cordage. It's come loose, I just don't want it to all untouch. I'll screw that in a second. And the two more bungees they have to secure this stuff. So let me just keep this secure at the moment, guys. There we go. I will just do for now. I'll secure it properly in a bit. But I think there's about, I think 50, 40 to 50 meters on there. Um, on this, it's double the amount that this that was on it originally. This is new cordage I've replaced with um, it's Combat UK again. It's the same cordage just in um, green instead of black that was originally on here. So paracord, um, cordage, whatever you want to call it, to be used to build shelter or for other things that you, you'll need to lash together cordages for them things you're always going to need um, here we do just have two bunges again with the two on the front here can be used to with this shelter you know to attach it to trees um, in here I'm not going to get it all out because there's a ripstop tarp in there and there's about 10 tent pegs and there's some, there's some extra loose cordage in there but there's 10 of these tent pegs so that is what I've got to make a shelter Really good heavy duty tarp in there. Use it again recently. Good, good bit of kit. Um, so this is just my EDC part in here. I've just got a little, little EDC pack in here. I've just got, you know, pencil. Uh, sorry, pen. I've also I've got a pencil somewhere. Wires to charge my phone, hand sanitizer, you know, COVID mask, or you know, mask, small out of duct tape, little flashlight, and um, waterproof again, all that sort of a little flashlight, a light or a whistle, some other little bits and bobs, just my EDC stuff that I just keep in this little protective case to keep it all secure. That's what's in there. Um, so. This is just in here because if I need a small little thing to prepare some food on, let's say I've catched a fish or if I'm preparing some, you know, like bulbs or, you know, some plants I've found. So simply, I know that this side with the disc thing like this is for me and I know this side is for vegetables. Um, so yeah, just gives that ability. And just to keep it extra secure on the inside, I just added a couple of these little plastic things. So it's a little bit, you know, just to keep, just to help support it. Just, I was going to buy a little cooking board, but I thought, you know what, a DVD case is something that's just small and plastic. I've got loads of old DVD cases lying around, so I thought, I'm just going to chuck this in. It was the same size one I was looking at, and, yeah, and also can be made even wider if I spread it out, you know, open it, so. Just a little improvised cooking board, if you want to use something, if you want to take that idea, you can. Um, so now, we're going to go over clothing, there's a lot in here. Because it is winter, obviously, I've had to kind of think more so what am I going to do. But obviously, because it is winter as well, having a fire is going to be really important. In here, I do just have a little collapsible wood stove. So if I do just need to make, or someone else just needs to make some small little fire to cook on, they've used all the gel blocks, 
also just to stay warm it's just a small little stove just so you can have a small little compressed fire so you know have somewhere to make that fire immediately very quickly and it can be used to cook on and all that as well so clothing obviously first of all one of the most important things is to keep your head warm so in here i do have i do have one of these myself i have two um is just a simple com you know uh, combat winter hatch you know like something the army uses in its camouflage as well so it helps with concealment um again for winter because I, uh, I do have a pair of these myself i have some really good heavy duty winter gloves and some heavy duty outer inner mitts so it can help with keeping you warm as well keeping your hands warm and keeping uh, from getting wet next thing i have here is just some um do you know like thermal socks do you know some like wool thermal socks and they're really good i'm wearing a pair right now i've been walking out of the garden with them without putting any shoes on when i've took my dog out at night and they dry up by the time i get upstairs because the wool and wool dries really quickly really good pair of really good really good socks i might have called them gloves a little cold but i meant socks um and here is some sit ties i think about 20 uh just some you know can be used to repair kit can be used to you know if there's a potential threat can be used to you know secure them so they can't be a threat anymore but main reason to repair kit some heavy duty black ones um, there is some other stuff to repair kit that will go a bit later but these won't fit where i keep all that so i'll just have them, have them in the side of my bag like that but there it is just about uh, 15 20 sit size so next time we'll get out is for the pants that you'll see in a short bit uh, here is just my brother's tactical belt this won't fit on me all the clothing you're gonna see is now is not for me uh, the other things can be used for me but all this is set up for someone else so here is just the tactical belt for that person to use to secure the pants and also can't be used to secure other things onto it um because it is winter i do just here have a uh, heavy duty you know like simple mill a lot of this is surplus because even though i'm buying in the kit i'm not going to buy major expensive stuff it just needs to function so you know again you know a wool like material uh, jumper there for winter two pairs of thermal underwear at least that's what they said were purchased them in medium size like longer legs ones as well so they're a little bit better for wearing in the winter underwear so now we have got um his t-shirt so a dpm uh, woodland camo t-shirt in his size here again in dpm a bit of a different uh, color though or a different material or i know this one's an official combat jacket this could be some snid you know knockoff but it's just a t-shirt for another layer here i do just have his um british you know dpm outdated now combat jacket now i i have took all the uh you know anything that had anything to do with the unit or the, you know the military because they didn't take off another thing i did leave on because it felt disrespectful to take off was the british flag um just on the shoulder there because i am british you know i feel, well, I don't feel like i can do you know i can support that even in the apocalypse or someone else can so that i didn't take off but all the other military insignias are off this because i will not disrespect them by wearing stuff that i have not earned or they have not earned and i will probably give them to a couple of people who i know if they want them we're in the military they might not be anymore but if they want them you know for collection or whatever or just for whatever i have no reason for them patches stuff like that uh Next thing I have here is pants. So these are some really good US Marine Corps pants that I got off someone a few years ago. Um, and yeah, really high quality again in his size, luckily. They do fit him, I've, you know, I didn't try him on with the tactical belt. And it's a different camouflage, but you know, it's another camouflage I would trust. So US Marine Corps digital camo there pants. The proper ones, again, they're probably worth a bit, but the, the, I know they're going to do the job, so that's why I've got them for him. Also, one bit of kit you're not seeing it isn't he? He does have. He also does have um, a really heavy duty, you know, like coat that would go over all this. In I think it's like a, a multi cam. I don't know if it's US or uh, British, but it's a multi cam like heavy duty. I think he's made of seal skin coat. Um, I might show you that in the future. There's some other bits of kit I do plan to add to his, so I will show you that. But he uses that in everyday situations. Anyway, he goes out, you know, if he walks the dog or anything. So that isn't up here, but. That is where, he, where we keep the coats on the coats rack. He's got that because it fits in perfectly. 
a lot of the surplus I buy, I see it as there's items that I want in there and I get a lot of extra, so this is why it was so easy to actually make this kit. So that is all of the clothing items there. Now let's go over what is on the compartments here. So for this, we'll go over the other clothing items first. Let me just put that there now because there is some other clothing items. Now in here we do have just an extra pair of normal socks, you know, just for when them ones are drying, it just gives you that ability to have another pair of socks on. Um, now obviously this can be used for concealment, but also if you are in a really cold weather situations, there is a balaclava there, thermal balaclava. The use can be used for concealment as well or intimidation. That's all that's in there. And then in here, this is pretty much just miscellaneous and stuff I don't really need. So in there is a sewing kit that I've got about uh, nine elastic bands and one on the outside. A couple of range bands um, and sewing kit stuff there. Here is some toilet paper, obviously to be used for its intended purpose, to wipe your batty crease after you had a banging shit, you know. But yeah, but that's what that's for. Um, some uh, gorilla tape, I think it was 5 metres or 4.5, but there's probably about 4 metres left. I've used that for little things I needed to fix in my room or on kit. Um, there is some hot chocolate. Uh, it, this is in there from when I used it, but you know, you don't like hot chocolate. Um, just for extra tape here is just some PVC tape can be used. I'm sorry, not PVC electrical tape. I think they're the same thing, but to be used to you know help repair any electricals. Next of all, again for winter, we do have two hand warmers. I think these each last eight hours. Um, personal medication. This is not for him, this is there because I might use this as well and other people in the family do have asthma. I've actually got over it, it, it I was, it's just something that I have some gastrointestinal thing, it's nothing major, not going to cause anything but I just have really bad stomach acid sometimes, so I'm now on medication but this is what they had me on thinking it was something, it was asthma but it wasn't, but I do have other family members who have asthma so this is still in date so that's why I've lit in here. It, he personally doesn't but other family members do so I have an asthma inhaler in pretty much every one of my kits. Um, a secondary flashlight, now I think in my last video I said this was waterproof. I can't remember, but I don't think it is. But this is just a little simple one to use in your camp, in your tent, or something like that. Um, throat lozenges. You can be used to make cups of teas. You know, I think these are cherry flavour. You can be used to make, you know, a cup of tea. Well, not really a cup of tea, a cup of warm water with some flavouring. Um, Gorilla glue. Can't go wrong. And here is the other two crossbow strings from a pistol crossbow. There. Is this one item? No, it's not missing. It's there. So before we go into that item, we'll go over this. So this is for the crossbow again. And so in here is just some string uh, wax, bowstring wax. So it'll just help keep your bowstring going longer, keep it better. Uh, and there is three more Allen keys. One is the same size as the one I've got there, and then the other two are two. Uh, you know, the ones are just the stock, and if one is to um, change, if I needed to sort out the site or anything, it could be that option. So that's what's in there. A little container. And then last of all is the wash kit in this dug out bag. Don't think I've missed anything. Oh, there's something making a noise there. No, that's just a whole bag, I think. It's not, oh, that's on the outside. Yeah, there's nothing I've missed in there, is there? Nope. Nothing I've missed. Nothing I've missed. Well, that's on the outside. We've gone over both them pouches. Gone over all this stuff on the outside of the bag. So, last of all, just in a little Ziploc bag. So, you know, obviously, because this is going to be used to keep me clean. Um, I don't want it to stink up the bag, so I'll just keep it in a Ziploc, in a little uh, Ziploc bag. So, in here, it's just... First of all, a rag that can be used to wash myself on my kit um, or other people. A toothpaste, a, a toothbrush that has not been used yet, so that's why it's in here. And a soap, so pretty up, just a simple little wash kit. Nothing special, but will keep you clean, just get the muck of the day off you. So that is everything inside this um, pack. Like I said, this is the, it actually says on out here. This is the Viking Patrol Assault Pack DPM colour. Uh, it doesn't say on here, but I'm pretty sure it's 60 litres. But with the pouch and all that, I can put, you know, it's probably you know about uh, 50, no, sorry, about 70 litres with the extra pouch that's on the outside. There for it.
so that is the bag and that is everything in it um yeah so like i said this is a secondary bug out bag or can we use it as a 72 hour old go bag that is more or less it guys for this video really hope you enjoyed it all that stuff leave a like comment let me know what you think got any ideas for the bag let me know in the comments that's always appreciated it's more or less it peace